This is a lesson on using patterns to solve problems. So using what we've learned in the last lesson on finding patterns and explaining them, and then using that to solve problems that are presented to us. Um, so right now, we are going to do the explore. And what I'd like you to do after I read it is for you to pause the video and see if you can figure out the um, pattern. So to solve the problem. So it says, what are the missing numbers? How do you know? So all of these houses are in the same problem. And this is a row, a road. Okay, and so this is houses on one side of the street and this is houses on the other side of the street. So pause right now and then we'll go through it. Okay, so um, please... If you haven't solved this, then please make sure that you've paused. Um, so a pattern that you may have noticed is this is 82, 84, something, 88. So you may have figured out that this is 86 just by skip counting. So you can see a pattern there. Um, and then you may have had more difficulty with this one because you only have two numbers on either side. But something that you may or may not have noticed, or maybe you already know this about um, houses on streets, this is how it actually works, is um, there's odd numbers on this side of the street and even numbers are on the other side of the street. So we've got 81, 82, this would be 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, and 88. So the pattern, this would skip count um, by two on even numbers, and this one skips count, skip counts by two with odd numbers. Now, if we look at the connect, it says one way to help solve problems when there are no pictures drawn for you, like in the explore question, is to draw a table to help you organize the information you have been given. So here's our example. It says, Sam charges $6 for each hour he babysits. How much does Sam earn when he works two hours, four hours, five hours? Show your results in a table. Here's your table. Okay, so that's question one. So, oops. Um, to answer question one, we've got a table, and I've drawn it for you. Sometimes you'll have to draw it yourself. So, time worked in hours. So, um, we know that when he works one hour, one hour, he gets six dollars an hour. Okay, when he works two hours, how do we figure this out? Well, if he works two hours, then he gets six dollars for each of those hours. So you could either go six plus six or six times two and that would equal 12. Then it wants to know for four hours. So we could put the three in there just to keep it consistent. Three times six is 18, or six plus six plus six is 18. Okay, if you wanna look at it, just add another six to this 18. So there would be plus six there, plus six there, plus six there. Oops, equals, equals, equals. Okay, so um, four hours, 18 plus six would be 24, plus six again to get our five hours would be 30. Okay, so we've got two hours, five, four hours and five hours. We've solved that. Okay, so he would earn $12 if he works two hours, $24 if he works four hours, and $30 if he works five hours. Next one says, use the pattern in the table to predict how much Sam will earn working 21 hours. So 21 would go here. And we need to figure this out. So we could extend the 
table. So we have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and continuing on. Um, but we also know that this number times 6 will equal the number that we want. So if we go 21 times 6, now if you need to use your calculator for this, then that's okay. You could use your calculator. 21 times 6, and that equals 126. Now you don't have to use your calculator because you could go 21 times 6 and if you remember how to multiply like this you go 6 times 1 is 6 and 6 times 2 is 12. So there's 126 there. Didn't need to use the calculator. Okay, so there we've answered A, we've answered B. Now C, will Sam earn exactly $40? $45, $50, how do you know? Now we know that at five hours he earns $30. So now we need to see if he'll earn $40, $45, or $50. And um, we don't have space on our table, but we can do it over here in our own second table, just because I didn't put enough space for that. Okay, so this is hours and this is money. So we know that five dollar or five hours is thirty dollars. Then six hours is what thirty plus six is thirty-six. Then seven hours, thirty-six plus six would be forty-two. So will he earn forty dollars? Nope. Eight hours. 42 plus 6 is 48. So no, he will not earn $45. And um, 9 hours, so 48 plus 6 would be 54. So he will not earn exactly any of those, right? We've got 30, 36, 42, 48, 54. So we would write no. Sam will not earn forty dollars, forty five, or uh, fifty. Maybe we should put exactly. Okay, um, another method, if you were not going to do um, a pattern, you could also divide these numbers by 6 to see if they make an even number. So, um, we will move on to the back side of your paper. So, what I want you to do right now is, after I read you the problem, then please pause the video and then solve, and then we'll go through it together, and you can see if um, you've got it. So this one says one puzzle book costs $17. How much does it cost to buy two books, four books? B says use a pattern to predict the cost of 20 books. And C, suppose you have 200 books. Can you buy puzzle books that have no money left over? How do you know? Okay, so use a, a table like we did above. And play the video again once you've finished all three of those questions. All right, so you have solved, and um, now we're going to do it together. So how much does it cost to buy two books or four books? Well, first of all, we know that one book, and you can see I've drawn a chart, uh, one book costs $17. Um, so two books would be 17 plus 17. So that would be $34. Okay, three books would be 37 um, so plus 17 and then plus another 17 so 34 plus 17 in this case um, it would be 7 plus 4 is 11 carry the 1 so 3 4 5 51 Okay, and then four books would cost 
another plus 17. Okay, so 1 plus 7 would be 8, and 5 plus 1 would be 6. So, uh, 2 books would cost $34, and 4 bo books would cost $68. So, it asks us how much it would cost, so we answer in the form of a sentence. Now, the next part, use a pattern to predict the cost of 20 books. So, we need to continue because we've got our pattern right here. So, we continue adding 17 to each time until we get to 20 books. Okay, so, um, I've calculated the cost. I've added 17 each time. And that's okay if you use a calculator in this case. That's a lot of adding 17, but you didn't have to. It's possible to solve without a calculator. So um, I used the pattern to predict the cost of 20 books. Um, so we've got 85, 102, 119, continuing on down to um, 20 books, which would be $340. So 20 books would cost $340. So this one's done. Now we've got uh, question C. Suppose you have $200. Can you buy puzzle books and have no money left over? How do you know? Okay, so lucky for you, we have gone more than $200 over in our pattern. So we don't have to do any more to our um, pattern here. We've got all, all that we need. So we need exactly $200. So we're looking for, is there $200 in the red here? Now, I can see $204. And then it jumps down to $187 and jumps up to $221. So um, can we buy an exact number of books and have no money left over? We would say that, um, no, we can't. We can't buy enough books to have exactly um, $200 to pay. So no, we can't buy exactly $200 worth of books because I can either get 11 books for $187 or 12 books for $204, but I'd be $4 short. Right, so I couldn't get 12. The most I could get is 11, and then I would still have some money left over. I would have $13. Okay, so if that didn't make sense, then please re replay the video. And um, if it did, then you can go ahead and do your assignment, which is page 11 and 12, number 2 to 5.